We want to welcome you to this uh, webinar. It's hosted by Scandinavian Photo, and uh, I am Casper Skarhoy of um, the company Skarhoy. We make awesome control panels, and I'll show you some of that uh, today. We're excited <coughs> that you chose to join us and um, put your trust in the next hour uh, well spent in the company of me and Kelle. Uh, Kelle, I would like you to introduce yourself as right. well. Well, thank you so much for having me here. My name is Kelle Merck. I work for Canon. Uh, I've been Canon for more than 14 years, actually. Um, so I'm a product specialist when it comes to professional video cameras and uh, yeah, solutions mm -hmm. in general uh, regarding those products. And uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here to join you in this uh, with your awesome control panels, with <laughs> our you. awesome cameras <laughs> um, that we launched a year ago, more or less. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. So pretty new in the business, but still Huge success, actually. Mm -hmm. very, very, very well received. Um, the feedback is good. So yes. happy to be here. Great. And uh, I got to say, we, we have been working with these cameras uh, at Skahoy for almost a, about a year because early on in the process, Canon approached us to see how they could have us develop support early on. Yeah. Um, you'll be going through the, the, <clears throat> the product range of Canon and how it all relates. And you even have your own controllers. It's not that we're offering something unique in the sense of just something to control. We are True. offering more and supplementary stuff and so on. And that's yeah. what you'll see in in this webinar as well. But uh, having worked with Canon all this time uh, with the European representative, the Japanese engineering team has been a big pleasure for me as well. And the outcome, I'm just so impressed. I gotta say these cameras are really, really amazing. So we are huge fans in this uh, house ourselves. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to also hearing what you have to say like uh, about Canon's offering and how it fits into your ecosystem. Right. So thanks for that. and. Um, I want to encourage you guys to use the Q&A. This webinar has ways for you to interact with us. And after our presentations, we uh, would like to answer questions from you if you have any. I think uh, the first things we want to do here is uh, launch a poll. Yeah. So we learn a little bit about the audience we um, have out there. So the poll should be visible for you right now. And um, we'll give them a few minutes to, to reply to that. It's just so we get an idea of, of uh, the kind of persons that are actually joining us now. So please submit your replies to these two questions uh, and we will get statistics from that. For the sake of me, who do not even know what we are asking right now. <laughs> so what are the questions? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I, I want to put Fair in my enough. vote too. Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> so, so the first poll is, how much experience do you have with PTZ Productions? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Yeah, very good. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the second one is quite, uh, that, that's a wide question. What do you do? <laughs> right. Uh, I, I mean, probably. <laughs> like, like now, <laughs> drinking coffee. Yeah. Uh, I, I, Driving I, a car. Probably, well, so the, the options are reseller, integrator, media professional, camera operator, sales or marketing, or other. All right. So okay. coffee wasn't in the No, and, that, and there's not a fifth option with a blank field where people can enter in their humorous uh, submissions. Yeah. We, we answer, don't know, want to know what you're doing right now. So <laughs> hopefully watching this show in a responsible manner. But <laughs> yeah. more questions? No, those are the... All right. Oh, sorry. No, there was a third one. Uh, have you heard about Skarhoy products before? And there are two options there. All right. So that's... Um, <laughs> Don't yes disappoint no. us. <laughs> no, actually, if you answer no, then you're at the right place because I want to show you what we can do with this. Yeah. So it's, um, it's all good. <clears throat> okay, let's close the poll in one minute. Yes. Very good. Yeah. So I, I got a new experience uh, from Copenhagen this morning mm -hmm. uh, when it's raining. Since everyone is using their bicycles yeah. and it's not raining, uh, yeah. uh, all the people wanted to use taxi cars. Oh, okay. so that was a bit of a hassle yeah. this morning. Yeah. So they said, "No, it's it's you need to wait thirty minutes because of the weather." And I was like, "What? It's <laughs> raining. <laughs> what, what about taxis? They don't fit in rain." Yeah. But uh, no, it was due to the the massive workload on taxis oh. because people don't use the bike anymore. Note to self check the weather yes. the night before. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. 
but you managed to get out here. We are very happy about that. So um, yeah, yeah, and well it's done. a cool <laughs> place you have. Um, uh, Christopher took me for a small tour. Oh, of the awesome. facility. Yeah, actually, right outside the studio, we have a pretty nice showroom, um, which I do like a lot. That it's a nice setting where you see all our products and how it's connected with different brands and so on. Yeah, that's nice. So hey, thanks for liking our offices. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a result. Um, so, how much experience do you have with PTZ Productions? The majority have replied, I have some experience, that's 42%. 23% uh, says I'm a professional and 35% says I'm a beginner. Mm -hmm. That's very average. What do you do? Um, media professional and camera operator, 60%. Then other, we don't know what that is, but other, 29% others. And then sales and marketing, um, that's 8% and reseller and, and or integrator is 4%. Okay. Have you heard about Scarhoy's product before? The million dollar question. 46% says yes. And 54% says no. Mm -hmm. So one out of two. Okay, that's a lovely mix. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. <clears throat> the poll is closed. Thank you for participating in the poll. Um, very, very useful uh, stats and uh, knowing a little bit about you. So, Caleb, really now um, it's uh, your time to uh, talk a little bit about uh, Canon. And yeah. uh, you have some slides you want to share with us. So yeah. Please go ahead. So, I will give you um, an overview on the, um, the models that we, are, uh, that, that we have in the lineup right now. Um, and a bit technical stuff as well, uh, and also a bit uh, of how we see this as not just a product, but a solution instead. So bear with me, it's going to be a PowerPoint race, uh, not that heavy as, as it can be. And uh, please type your questions in the Q&A section and we will have a look at them afterwards. Right. So to start with, PT said, now, Many of you have, of course, heard about this uh, before or are familiar with that. But still, it stands for pan, tilt and zoom. And we also added focus, uh, which is something that we are very proud of. The autofocusing system that we have in our cameras, um, very, very well working. So pan means, of course, that you move the camera horizontally. And tilt means that you move the camera vertically. And zoom is zoom, getting closer or further away. And as I mentioned uh, initially, we don't see this as just a product, it's a solution. So we need to have multiple products in this uh, like uh, setup to make it work. And the reason why PDZ cameras are very interesting uh, or has a very high interest right now is uh, of course that you can control multiple cameras from one control panel. So multiple angle productions uh, with fewer people involved. But to do so, we need to have uh, a few other equipment and th those are the ones that are shown on this slide. For example, we have cameras to the left and we have some switcher of, of any kind. We need to have a network switch. Uh, the cameras are powered over Ethernet. Uh, it needs to be POE plus. POE isn't enough, but POE plus, POE plus plus will work. And then some kind of controller, it can be a hardware controller. We do have one, but for this, uh, this seminar, we will talk about the awesome blue products from Skarhoi. Um, it's also possible to control the cameras uh, via PC. That's a software controller. And then of course you need to have some monitoring device. So a lot of products uh, can be involved or need to be involved to have this solution. It's not just a product. And we have a vision uh, at Canon or, um, or um, a target that we say that we were going to integrate all our imaging products into one and same, um, with one and same protocol to be able to control the cameras, to be able to get uh, image information and stuff like that. And we call it the XC protocol. And our cameras are compatible with that, of course, and so is our controller, the hardware controller. So in the future, we will see more and more imaging products being compatible with this protocol to be integrated into the same ecosystem or same solution. So we can control multiple cameras from one and same controller. And the range that we are offering right now, 
we have uh, actually we have four cameras, uh, but I, um, I I removed the CRX 500 because I think these three are the ones that are uh, of main interest. So the CRN 300 and CRN 500 launched in March last year, and then we have the CRX 300 that we launched in December last year. And here you can see the main features on each camera. The CRN 300 and CRX 300, those cameras are essentially the same camera unit inside. But the CRX 300 is designed to be used um, outdoors. So it's weatherproof, IP classified, it's got uh, a wiper, it's got washing fluid so that you can keep the glass clean uh, even though it's a harsh environment outside. Uh, that camera also features IR uh, filming. That means that you can remove the IR cut filter to be able to shoot uh, in very, very dark environments. That could be interesting for reality shows, for example, or for nature photography as well. And the CRN 500, that's the, the, uh, the top model of the indoor version cameras. It's got a larger sensor, less zoom range then, of course, due to the larger sensor size. But it's got a better uh, autofocusing system compared to the CRN 300. So, more in detail, I will give you some information uh, in a few slides. As for the controller offer we have right now is that we have the Panted Zoom free of charge software controller. That's uh, some uh, software you download from our website and uh, it's no, at no additional cost. And that camera can control, oh sorry, that software can control multiple cameras as well. It's PC compatible only and it needs to be Windows 10. Um, very important, so no Mac support um, on that. And then we have the RCIP100 controller, uh, and um, we will not talk much about that because we have other controllers here this day. So, how did Canon end up with these kind of uh, cameras? We've had uh, network cameras for many, many years. Uh, we also have the, uh, the professional camcorders that's been around for ages. So we actually took the know-how when it comes to imaging quality from the camcorders and we took the know-how when it comes to network features or controlling uh, cameras with, via network and we blended that into these two cameras, the CRN300 and CRN500. So essentially we can, uh, we can um, recognize the camera units inside the, the Pantilson cameras with camcorders that we we've had in the market for many years now. So actually network cameras is not something that is new to Canon, but since we acquired um, the Swedish company Axis mm -hmm. uh, some years ago, uh, the decision was taken that uh, Axis is uh, both marketing and reselling the Canon NVS products. But those are more for surveillance or governance, while these two cameras are more for, for creative work, um, get the shallow depth of field, you get a nice looking image, you can tweak the image much more than you can do with the, the NVS cameras. The uh, CRM500, as I said, uh, features 15 times zooms compared to the CRM300 and CRX300 that features 20 times zoom. We also have optical image stabilizer in both these cameras, uh, or all our cameras actually. So why would that be important? It's a fixed Installation, yeah, but looking at the office landscapes, the walls can be quite weak. Uh, so when someone closes the door, uh, the, the camera might shake. So it's a really good thing that we have optical stabilization in the cameras as well. So the CRM500, we could say that that's an XA50 or XA55 camera <coughs> inside. With one inch type sensor, we have the, the dual pixel autofocusing system, which is really, really well working. And we have um, uh, our own CMOS sensor. We also have 4K oversampling in all our products. Uh, that means that if you want to output Full HD, for example, the camera will record a 4K image and then it will downsample it or oversample it to uh, 1080, which gives a very, very nice looking image. It's, it's organic or uh, you could say an analog look. To it mm -hmm. and that happens uh, automatically you don't need to do anything special to to activate that and this is um, an example of uh, how oversampling works um, and this has been around for maybe 10 
12 years or something, but we haven't talked much about it. But it's a, it's a really good feature. It gives you the, a great looking picture. Mm. Also, the dual pixel autofocusing, that is uh, something that we've seen in uh, both camcorders, but uh, first in um, cinema, EOS cameras and, and still cameras. That is applicable uh, in these cameras as well. Or sorry, the CRM 500. So a very, very accurate and fast autofocusing is nailing the subject immediately. That is something that the CRM 300 doesn't feature, um, and I will show that later. Also, for manual focus, the, the dual pixel autofocusing system provides a feature we call focus guide or uh, focus assist, where you can actually have a very, very clear view on what is in focus and what is not. So peaking in, in general is something that's been around for many years as well, but peaking gives you information on everything that is in focus and that might disturb the image, that might be a bit annoying to see the yellow contours on everything that is in focus. So you just choose where you want to have this square and you can have guidance of the, the arrows that gives you information if you're behind your subject or in front of your subject mm. and which way should you go. So we have also face detection, autofocusing and face detection and tracking. The camera will not move, but the, the autofocusing will keep the subject in focus within the frame. So important to know that the camera doesn't move. Also on the CRM 500, we can find the, uh, the deep menus of custom picture settings. So it's possible to tweak the image with color matrix. You can adjust the gamma curve with <coughs> knee slope uh, and also use different color gamuts. Exactly the same as we find in the professional camcorders. And the CRM 500 also features built-in ND filters. And that is of course good if you're shooting in a bright environment and you want to have that shallow depth of field. Um, and, and that's possible to, to achieve thanks to the large sensor size. Um, but you cannot use fast shutter speed in video as mm. you can do in stills. So it's a really good feature to have two, four and six stops of ND filters built inside. And it's also of course controllable remotely. Yes. Yeah, and uh, image quality modes, we see uh, that there are various options here on the CRM 500 and also different gamma curves and color space that we cannot find in the CRM 300. That's a, that's a more simplified version when it comes to image adjustments. And thanks to the mechanism that we have in the cameras, it's also possible to, to uh, have um, horizontal roll correction and vertical roll correction. So not something that we talk much about either, but it's, it's a really good feature to be able to adjust that as well. So, signal outputs. We have uh, IP, of course, that's the whole idea with these kind of cameras. And we have SDI on both cameras and both HDMI. And I won't go through all of this, but you can see the output quality that is possible to achieve from each uh, signal type. Right, so the output on, uh, or input, output, the, the, the rear part of the CRN500 looks like this. So what we can see here, uh, and that's quite unique in the business, is that we have uh, XLR inputs on the CRN500, which gives you the possibility to use professional microphones. You have the balanced input and you have a phantom power if you like. And you will have everything blended into one output feed. So that means that you could have wireless microphones connected to a remote controlled camera but you, and you don't need to have a separate audio uh, device for, for audio input. Next to that we have the LAN, uh, oh sorry, the, the 3.5 mini jack for microphone that's also present in the CRM300. And then we have both LAN connector and serial uh, connector. And uh, the CRM500 also features Genlock which is not present in the CRM300. And also, as I mentioned, that the camera can be powered over Ethernet or PoE Plus, but it's also possible to use the provided uh, AC adapter that's in the box if you were not to have a PoE switch, for example. 
And just quickly some words about the CRM300, a smaller model and you can see it if we have the, the wide shot of us here. Uh, we have both the cameras on the table here and the big one is of course the CRM500. And this one, the smaller one is the CRM300, so it, it's, it's quite a lot of a difference when it comes to size and weight. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, <coughs> but smaller size, smaller sensor, that gives uh, larger or, or higher zoom range instead. Mm. So both cameras uh, are, of course, interesting, but probably for different usages. Um, it's, it's possible to use digital zoom on the CRM300 as well, and you get a lot of reach, actually. So we can see it here, for example. And about the autofocusing system, I, I mentioned that um, the CRM500 features is dual pixel autofocusing system, which is excellent. On the CRM300, we have the hybrid AF. And that works in a way that there is a distant distance meter uh, just below the, the front lens of the camera, which gives you the camera information. Okay, so it's 11.3 meters to the subject. Mm. So the, the camera moves the focusing uh, lens groups uh, close to that, and then it makes the fine tuning with uh, contrast on the, on the CMOS sensor. But as we can see on the picture uh, on the slide is that it will go like a bit further away, a bit closer and then nails mm. it. Whereas the dual pixel AF, it nails it immediately. So that's also a benefit on the CRM500. But the hybrid AF is better than the, the, the just contrast AF and that is what we can see in the network cameras. So it's something in between mm. there. Also mentioned, um, we cannot find the custom picture profile settings uh, on the CRN500. We find these scene modes or simplified scene modes. So you don't have the same possibility to tweak uh, the image to match other cameras with the CRN300. On the other hand, we could say that the CRN300 camera is uh, an XA40 or XA45 inside. So if you were going to blend those two cameras, no problem at all. And I think that you, Kasper, you have uh, images on um, from both cameras, so we can have yes. a look at, the, at the, the quality difference because there are, of course, quality differences between the cameras. It's also price differences. So something should be better with the CRM500, right? And that is. <coughs> so just have a look at that in a few moments. The rear part of the CRM300 looks like this. So we see that we are missing the XLR inputs and also the Genlock uh, BNC connector. Next to that, it's, uh, it's the same connectors actually. And just a few words about controllers then. We have, as I mentioned, our hardware controller, which we won't discuss very much uh, in this session. But the software controller is um, something that is included in the price. So just download it from our website you're good to go on any PC with Windows 10 mm -hmm. um, or higher. So it can control 20 Canon cameras, um, can have a preview of nine of them. The controller doesn't provide you any preview, uh, of course. Um, and also you can have um, uh, 100 preset positions uh, on each camera and 10 rehearsals or traces or patterns that you sort of record. You move the camera, I think you will mm -hmm. show that in, in, a, in a while. What is something that is really a good feature that we don't talk much about either is that you can use any uh, key on the keyboard to like make a shortcut of your own choice. So a lot of things can be controlled on the key, uh, the keyboard from the computer as well. And as I mentioned in the beginning is that we see this as a solution, not a single product, and we need to have uh, products from other manufacturers inside this solution as well. So these are just a few examples of that. And I think that um, we will give an example on how to set this up because I've talked to a lot of customers or people that are interested in this and they say, hey, it looks so complicated. Uh, is it advanced? Can I actually manage this myself? And that is the whole point with this solution is that it doesn't have to be advanced or complicated mm. if you don't want it to be. You could do so much, <coughs> but if you just want to have a few more angles in your production, it's, it's quite easy to set it up actually. 
So here we have like um, an illustration of how a simple solution could look like um, with one camera. And here is an example of how it could look like when using multiple cameras. So the last part from my side is the protocols. Uh, we support NDI HX. Mm -hmm. It is included in the price, the license for this. No need to pay extra for that. Also, we support, of course, RTP, RTSP for live streaming and RTMP. Uh, and then we have the, our own protocol, mm -hmm. XC protocol. And I know that you are very familiar with that, Casper, and that you will talk a bit about that. And probably I will learn something as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, All right. So, so uh, um, that's it from my side. Thank you so much. And... Um, I want to learn if we have any questions in our chat yeah. or in the Q&A section of the call. All right, so we have a few. Um, anonymous attendee and, uh, wants to know if we have any auto-tracking solution. If not, is it in the pipeline? We need this in higher education. Okay, <coughs> very, very good question. Um, and as I mentioned, we don't have it. Uh, there is um, a company called Searview that have a solution for this. There are some other companies as well. Right, yeah. um, what's in the pipeline? Sorry, Anonymous, I <laughs> cannot talk about things that aren't existing right now. But um, let, let's just face it, we are one year into this business. And uh, yeah, we had a great success. And this I think is so something, too. Yeah. yeah, we are gonna develop so much more, both when it comes to technology products, but also like softwares and firmwares, that's for sure. Mm. But what, what will come and when it will come, if it will come, sorry, I cannot, cannot say anything about yeah, that. We also in touch with a number of companies who do auto tracking solutions. And uh, I'm sure uh, I haven't spoken to them because of the Corona lockdowns, having uh, had yeah. no chances really to meet them at trade shows. But I am pretty sure they are going to be am amazed by your cameras and how easy they are to control and, and that tells me that they are, if they haven't done it already, they are looking to integrate it in, in the solutions they offer that integrate with uh, third-party cameras like this. So. Mm. Yeah, yeah, most likely, yeah. Mm. Ois, sorry for my pronunciation. Oysten, he wants to know, or he gives actually a comment. So, no, no 4K SDR output then. Exactly correct. On the CRM 300 and the CRM 500, no. Uh, 4K SDI output, but on the CRX 300 there is uh, 4K SDI output. Another anonymous user, or if it's the same, that we don't know. We don't um, know. We've been using Panasonic camera for many years. How does Canon PTC stand out? Why should I consider changing brand? Well, um, I know the Panasonic people. Um, I like the Panasonic people and I like the Panasonic products as well. They definitely are better in some respects than we are. Uh, they have more models to choose from, for example. They That's have true. been in the business for so much longer than we have. What we can say is uh, a better feature is the sort of rehearsal. And as we discussed also, you can set the movement from one preset to another, the speed of that. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we have a great autofocusing system. We have the XLR inputs on the CRM500. And the image quality itself is, is really, really good. Um, and that is something that I hear from, mm -hmm. from both customers and partners as well. So, but um, I think that what I just um, went through on the slides uh, more or less shows <laughs> yes. that what, what we are good at. And, <coughs> and um, then I think uh, we should ask Panasonic what, what they are good at as well and then do the comparison. Right. Um, and on our side, of course, we are out of, uh, uh, for our reason to, to be loyal to all our partner brands. Uh, I couldn't tell you if Panasonic or Canon is the better camera, but I can tell you that these are amazing products. And I think just the entry into this market with those cameras is really um, giving otherwise really good cameras like Panasonic are something to run for. They need to match these cameras on some of those features you highlight and that we have noticed also as we've been working with these. I, I want to highlight that, that uh, focus yeah. thing, which we have noticed, wow, that's, that's really good and fast mm. and clever and precise and all those things. And then, of course, we have enjoyed working with your new protocol, the XC protocol, uh, which you also had a slide about. So, um, yeah. 
Um, but I'll, I'll say a little bit about that when I get to my controllers here. Yeah. Do we have more questions? There uh, are two more questions. Okay, so, Oystan, uh, what? Three more questions now. Uh, uh, what version of the NDI HX? Uh, to my recollec recollection, it's it's the first version, uh, and I know the second version is out there, and there has also been announced that the third version or Mark III or I don't know what you call it. Uh, has been announced, but that's just for developers mm -hmm. uh, as it is right now. But these cameras have um, the first version. Stellan, what kind of controls do you have on the sound if you connect real microphones to the camera? Okay, so then you can control the audio input uh, from the remote camera software controller. Um, and um, Stellan, maybe you are in Sweden. Uh, I can share you my details afterwards and we can discuss more in detail uh, on how to control the audio. But it, it's possible. Um, okay, now there are so many questions. I think we, maybe should we pause them yes, because uh, you need to have... Then we'll move on here a little yeah. bit and we'll come back to the questions. We'll come back to the questions and, and so uh, afterwards. And we can stay for longer than until one if, if needed. That, that's what? probably what we'll be doing. We'll yeah. try to keep the webinar within the time frame that has been planned, and then we'll just keep going as long as you guys want to talk with us. So, uh, but we are really happy for your interaction with us, and uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for doing that. So, um, one of the things that uh, I noticed in your presentation is your mention of the XC protocol, and the slide about the protocol is one where you show not only the PDC cameras, you also have the EOS series cameras, and mm. uh, there's the XF uh, camcorder series, and then some POV cameras, and a third group, I think monitors, outputs, yeah. uh, outputs projectors, and, and so on. Projectors. So that tells me that you had a vision that I didn't know about, no. which is that this protocol is basically gonna cover a much larger product range than just cameras. And since we are in the business of controlling stuff, uh, and we already did the base implementation work of the XC protocol for these two cameras, for your uh, CRX300 outdoor camera, and also the ES C300 and C500 cameras. It means that we are likely to, like within a week or month, to support anything new that comes out on the protocol side from Canon. And that's yeah. really exciting, having uh, spent all this engineering time in supporting that and being able to just add a little bit more. The way we go about control is that we, we do it in a clever way. So whenever we support a camera or parameter, it can actually be mapped onto any Skahoy product. So I have um, four products here today, and I won't show every one of them in detail, but whatever you see happen on one of them is also applicable on another one. At the same time, that's not really how you would use our controllers because you have a controller for PDC cameras yeah. and it's a touchscreen controller. It is. And uh, it has some advantages, but it also has disadvantages. And one of the reasons why our products are so beloved in this business is that you have tactile control. In a, in a, in a business where you need to keep your eyes on a screen, you need to, keep your, to, to, um, to touch your control with your fingertips and basically see with your fingertips. And that's what you get with the tactile controllers we produce. Yeah. So if you want to recall a preset on a camera, you can more easily do that when you touch buttons than if you need to look down on a touchscreen. So that's, that's an obvious thing about touchscreens where they, they fall short of actual buttons. Yes. That is when this is happening. And if you see the controller here in front of me, the PDC Extreme, which is one of our most popular controllers on the European market for professional PDC control, on this controller, you see not only uh, buttons, but you also see small displays. So in fact, we have sort of tried to mix the uh, application of touch screens, the flexibility you get out of that with um, tactile buttons that you can't move around, but you can still change the function by simply changing what you assign to it. And then the display above the button or above the knob will change and show you what this component is now controlling. Mm. So this is how we kind of hit that sweet spot in between a very fixed panel and then a more fluent one like this one. That is so clever. I, I love that. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. It makes them super, super flexible. And it also means another thing. You see that I have a camera selector down here. It says camera one and camera two. And we have the CRN500, CRN300 uh, CRN cameras. We can choose between those. There's a clear label here, which you can set in a piece of software if you want. And um, 
then we, um, yeah, what was it I want to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to point out that up here, you see that as I, as I go through these menus, it, if I change between these cameras, you actually see over here that one parameter disappears mm -hmm. as I'm going to the CIA N300. And what might that be? Oh, it might be the, um, um, the ND filter. So if I turn this knob, you'll see if we have the output of uh, the CIA N500 on the screen, you can see, uh, I think this is, yeah, there, there you go. You can see as I'm turning the knob right now, you see the ND filter is moving forth and back in front of the lens, right? And that's exactly how we do the integrations on our controllers. We, we implement the exact features that each of these cameras have. And you have highlighted a number of differences between them. Mm. Our controllers know about those differences. They know about the particular value ranges. So the shutter speed range that you find in one of these cameras will be different. If, if they are different, they are different on our controller and so on. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we have a basic P2C control of these two cameras and uh, are we still on the... Okay, I'll just control the CIA in 500 now. So you can see the picture of that one. I'm just zooming in here slowly with the joystick. I can also uh, move to the side. By the way, one thing that you also did, you didn't even mention it, but your camera is sensitive to the zoom, to, to the um, uh, yeah. Yeah, focal mm -hmm. length. Um, what I mean is... If I move the joystick much like this, it, it won't just raise to the right. No, it sure. will be um, moving the camera, panning the camera with respect to how far I've been zooming into the image. So now I'm zooming out and now I'm moving it more heavily to the left here. And the speed that it picks up is much higher than when I was zoomed in in the picture. See, this is not, this is not natural for PTC producers. I know that. I've seen a ton of PTC cameras. Yeah, yeah. But your camera does it. Some other brands does it as well. So this is great. This is a, a quality mark of what you've been doing here. When you talk about movement, uh, what I didn't mention is that we paid a lot of uh, R&D on the movement of the camera. So normally you think that fast is better than slow. Mm -hmm. Fast is funner than slow. Oh, yeah. Funner. Funny, <laughs> more funny. Um, but in this case, you want to have the very, very smooth movement and you want to have a soft landing. Yes. So the cameras, they have a really, really nice and move, uh, smooth movement and you can choose if you want to have a hard stop or hard acceleration or soft stop, soft acceleration as well. Clearly, you did your research well when you designed the specs of these cameras. I'm just saying that, that it's a really, really good entry on this market. Um, I, I want, so we have pan, tilt and zoom on the joystick here on both of these cameras. We have preset recall. So if I press this button and I think we need the camera picture up there. Yeah, so if I um, uh, press the preset recall buttons, I can recall a number of presets that I've stored in the camera. And I also want to show you how uh, quickly I can make a new preset. So now I'm just navigating over to this cup right here. See if we can frame that. Yeah, please move it a little bit more in that direction. <laughs> this no, is very good. This take is it difficult. closer to you. Yes, <laughs> very no. good. There we go. Now, notice what I do here. I just press and hold, and then the preset is stored on number five. So if I press number four, then we recall this preset. I press five, we go to the preset I just stored. So it's, it's really so easy working with these controllers. On the PVC Extreme, we have a zoom rocker over here. So that's like the professional's alternative to zooming. I, I'm using that now. You can also turn the joystick knob if you want to zoom. So that's really two options. Um, if you want to have only one of them active, you can disable it, or you could even associate this with a slider. So imagine putting your PTC camera on a, on a horizontal slider, yeah. and then this zoom rocker is in fact moving the camera forth and back to have horizontal movement as the fourth yeah. axis of your camera. So that's an exciting idea as well. Uh, we have autofocus and in the camera, of course, but if we go to the focus menu here, and if we go to, let me see, manual focus, um, uh, where's that? Manual focus. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Of, it's probably actually over here. So I'm now at manual focus. It means that I can change the focus of the camera with this uh, rocker. And it's really, really precise. So there you can really tweak it as the cameraman you are. And you need a PTC controller that gives you this. And it's, it's compatible with your thumb. So it's just right here as you hold your fingers on the zoom rocker. So guys, as you can see, this controller is clearly designed for the professional camera operator of PTC cameras. We have a ton of uh, menu options here. So all the things you have talked about, Kayla, is uh, basically a uh, map down on these buttons. Sometimes there's even a shift level, so like in the exposure menu, we have all these options up here. And if I hold down the shift key, I have even more. So notice if the shift key turns uh, into a cyan uh, colored uh, color, then it means that we have even more options in here. 
you can see we have video matrix, uh, matrix. Um, there are different options for that. We can set neutral video and so on. We have uh, color space settings that I also remember from some of your slides uh, right here. And uh, we have uh, the details uh, menu, sharp, uh, sharpen level limit, um, black gamma level, black gamma point and so on. Um, and uh, here we do not have a shift level. Then we have the matrix settings where we can adjust phase and gain for a number of dimensions on this. And uh, moving on to focus, we have a number of, because you have a lot of settings for focus. I know that mm. from your, your UI, so uh, you can adjust that in here as well. The home screen is generally where we have put the most important things to have immediate access to. So the configuration you see on the PTC Extreme is what we call a pro class configuration. We have taken um, the settings from the camera to a greater length into these menus and mapped it out here. And if you know about our RCPs, they have the exact same set of features available. Uh, an RCP is a, is a device with a um, fader uh, a joystick on it that, can, uh, that is used by color shaders mm. to, to, um, to let more or less light into the camera. And, and the separation between an RCP and a PTC controller like this one may be important to you because this is really a cameraman's device. The guy who controls pan, tilt and zoom and focus of the camera. And the RCP is the color shaders device. But you can actually also do shader operations on this because it has the same power as the RCP. Mm. You may just want to have a separate person doing it. I can guarantee you that our RCPs are compatible with the same things. I just won't show it uh, today here. But what I will show are some of the other controllers. So we have the PVC Fly here, which is a, um, the, it's not the smallest controller we have, but it's almost getting close. Um, it's um, um, one of our highest running products because of its simplicity and thinking about volunteers. Uh, you have been talking about some of the customers, the cases before the show here, where mm. obviously people need simple. Yeah, and absolutely. this is not simple. The PTC Extreme is for broadcast professionals. Yeah. I guess this is why it's so popular here in Europe. Not saying anything bad about Americans, but <laughs> I know that in, uh, there are definitely customers out there who are crazy about the form factor of a PTC flight because it has many of the same things. You can see, um, let's see if it's booted up soon. Um, I'll just set it aside until it's waking up because I have another product which is basically the same, which is the, the PDC Fly, uh, sorry, PDC Pro. Yeah, PDC, this is PDC Fly, this is PDC Extreme, this is PDC Pro. So it's like uh, small, medium, large, yes, on these controllers. Now, this controller is another one of our popular controllers. They are um, the, the most popular ones, the PDC Fly and the PDC Pro. Now, the PDC Pro is actually not connected, but I wanna show you a pretty cool feature uh, from our universe here. And that is, um, if I go to the management interface of, uh, ah, now I know why the PTC Fly did not show you anything. Ah, it's clever. I'll get back to that in a moment. Yes. Now, um, PTC Extreme. So I'll just show you this with the PTC Pro because the PTC Pro has just more direct access to things than the PTC Fly, but you'll see in a moment. Now, the cool thing is that the PTC Extreme has such a powerful engine inside that it can in fact host another panel. So if this is the host, this would be the guest panel. And notice what I can do right now. I just add a panel here, type in, uh, let's type PDC, and then we will see in this list the PDC Pro V2, this product on this IP address. Let me just check. Yes, I select this. I hoped I selected it. It's like it just disappeared. Okay, that's so funny in demos, yeah. <laughs> Demo ghost. Exactly. Let's just search pro here. Yes, I'll just try once again, press this select button and there we go. It's now added, it's connected. I can even test by this little lamp that it is in fact the controller I want to talk to. And you know, it's now a part of, it's a guest controller on this one. All I need to do to control cameras is to just press this add button. And I already have two cameras added, which is the CRN 500 and 300, obviously. So I'm just adding, in this case, one of them. So what that means is that we have like a guest controller where you can just, let's say you had 10 cameras, you could just take three of them, put on this one and hand it over to yeah. someone. That's pretty useful, right? That's clever, yeah. Yes, and they are preserving bandwidth. So as we are talking with the XC protocol to your cameras, we are only keeping a single connection to the cameras because these two controllers are sharing that same uh, access to, to the cameras. 
Let's just recall a preset on the CIN 500. So hopefully you can see this on the screen. Okay, I'll just push a few buttons here so you can see how quickly this camera is recalling presets. And I'm doing that by pushing these, these buttons down here. So it's just uh, cycling around. That was the wrong button. I should not have recalled that one. <laughs> and then finally, I think the Skahoi cup right there. All right. Now, um, what did not go wrong, but where I had not prepared myself on the late change I just did just before the show is with the PDC Fly here. And with the PDC Fly, um, you see the, the UI of this one. It's actually running and it's working, but I had not added the cameras that I wanted. So I want to show you how easy it is to add a Canon camera to this one. I'll just search up the model. And by the way, Cal, this shows us that we have currently five different Canon models in support in the XE. And that's what I mentioned earlier. The XE protocol has been implemented in a generic way in our controllers. So I just need, I cannot select the EOS C300 and C500 because those are not the cameras we are controlling today and neither the CRX300, the outdoor model. But we have CRN uh, 500 and 300 here. So I'll just add CRN 500. So it pops up over here as a device and I'll just click it and I'll type in the IP address of the camera here and um, I press save and shortly after it will be connected to the camera. It's actually done already and you see it pops up on the controller down here with this button. I select the button and you see that I have now stuff in the displays and I can also move the camera around which I think you may be able to see in a moment if that's being switched in. So there you see I have just obtained control of the camera easily on the PDC fly here. Now, I mentioned that these two controllers or this controller, the PDC Fly, is in fact um, a very popular controller because of its simplicity. So you see, we have on, on the home screen that you go to if you press the joystick on the top, we have the shooting mode, full auto, we can go to manual. So those are the two options we have here. We have joystick sensitivity. That's a useful little thing. Let's just set the sensitivity to one. If I push the joystick all the way to the left, you can see it's pretty slow. But if I change the sensitivity, it basically means that I'm speeding up the camera. You see, so that affects the, how the joystick operation is. I can now put it all the way to the top and now we have really quick camera as I'm pushing the joystick all the way over. We have also focus position and manual focus uh, speed in the home screen menu. But just follow here what's happening as I'm pressing the upper edge of this button. I'm paging through a number of select features from the camera until I finally end up on my home screen once again. So on these controllers, when they have six buttons like this and four encoders, we usually use what is called four-way buttons. It means that the buttons can have functionality on different edges. And this navigation button has exactly that. So on the upper edge, I'm paging through the menu. On the lower edge, I'm basically toggling between my presets. And I can recall presets like uh, the same presets that we uh, had on the other controllers. So I'm toggling forth and back between camera selector and presets. And if I press these sides, I am basically paging now through my presets and that is shown by the labels right there. Hmm. Um, the PDC Fly and the Pro, those two controllers are running on the same configuration. So a way for me to tell you what the difference is here is to say that the PDC Fly has the navigation button that will expose the menu or expose the preset recall, while on the PDC Pro, it's all available in a direct access. So you see Presets are directly accessible here. The menu is directly accessible here. So that's what you get on the PDC Fly. But actually the features that you find in the menu of this controller is the same as you had on uh, the, the PDC Fly. So Pro and Fly are running on what we call standard class configurations. Um, when anything ships from Skahoy, we want you to have great defaults. We want you to be started in a really short time. The UI of Reactor that I've shown you today, which is the software in the panel, will help you to quickly search up Canon cameras on the network, add them to your camera selector. You can even move them around. You can change the, the label of them. So if you uh, go to the camera selector here, you can uh, see that the name of the camera is, is right here in this list. And uh, if I change that, um, let me see, this is the PDC Fly. Okay, so um, I'll just change it to awesome. And uh, if I do that, then we'll see on the PDC Fly over here that the camera name is changed 
to awesome in the display. Um, if I hold it real still, you can see that it just changed right there. So it's super, super easy to manage your cameras with our great panel management software, which is a part of these controllers. Um, I also want to mention that this is running on our new platform called Blue Pill. And um, a Blue Pill is actually a, a standalone product. It's, it's a little um, this size server that will provide the functionality that you have seen today yeah. to um, so-called Unisketch panels. Because for 10 years, we have produced controllers that uh, run on a specific platform of software. And during the Corona times, we finally had the chance to dive into developing a new Linux-based platform. And that's what is running in these controllers. They have an option added to them called Blue Pill Inside. So you can have them in Unisketch or Blue Pill. And uh, if you choose the Blue Pill option, it means that the power of Blue Pill is built in to the controller. So like you see here, this is like a master and or a host controller, and this is a guest controller to the host over here. It's not my full presentation. I have just another thing in the sleeve that I will present at the end. But let me know if there are any questions from you or from the audience. There are no further questions. Uh, and and um, I get an information from, from our workshop in, in Gothenburg. They're saying that there are questions in the chat as well. So, but I think we, we take them afterwards. Or can you also store the focus point of each preset on the controller? That's a good question. Odd is asking. Um, see, the, actually for me, that's a question to you. If we store a preset position in the Canon camera, would it also store the focus position? Yes. So that's a yes to you. Is it also true? I'm not sure. But is it true that you can select whether or not it does? Because I have some kind of recollection that you had advanced uh, preset definitions. But I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, I'm not 100% sure of that either. But, but what I know is, is saved both when it comes to the traces mm. or patterns rehearsals, yeah. but also presets is uh, more or less everything. So if you change your gamma curve, for example, mm -hmm. for one preset, that will also be saved in the preset. So it's just uh, like a snapshot on the camera's configuration okay. and right. also lens positioning uh, and, and focus. Yes. But I'm not sure if you can sort of select what kind of parameters you would like to store. That, that I'm not sure about. So in this case, it sounds like we would actually have to look into the yes. manual of the camera to learn about that. But the, the main point is the preset recall command we are sending to the camera is uh, one that will recall the preset and the way it's managed in the camera. Mm -hmm. But I also want to add one thing, which is clever about Reactor and Blue Pill here. And that is we have an internal preset engine in our controllers. So in case you stored only a set of parameters, but not the focus position, and that would be desired by you. It would be possible to associate also a Skaho internal preset that would say, okay, when we store the preset in the camera, set, send the, the store command, at the same time, we are storing the focus position, and maybe, maybe the uh, focus type uh, manual auto, we store that as well inside the controller. And right. when we then recall, we do two things. We send a preset recall to the camera, and then we also set the focus position to the camera. Mm. And it will be transparent to the user. So that's the kind of power that we have in the system. Now, before we go on to other questions, I would like to invite you to just uh, behold this uh, final controller here. It has to boot up. So actually, maybe we could have another question just before. Uh, Marius is asking, I have two CRN uh, 300 cameras and the RC IP100 controller. Does the controller work with cameras from other producers? Do the software controller work with other cameras? No, uh, Marius, uh, they only work with Canon cameras. But that's why you are watching this webinar with Skahoy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's why I was so eager to participate here as well. <laughs> so the, the thing is um, that Skahoy is masters of integration. We really do not only, uh, usually we do not only sell products with a single product like the Canon cameras. Our controllers are still great only with Canon cameras because you get to choose between different form factors and you have more flexibility in how you want to re-orchestrate the, the settings you can control. You get tactility for your preset recalls and yeah. all these things. So that alone should give you some kind of idea if the standard offering from Canon is the way to go or if you want the flexibility that Skyhoy can offer you. We can integrate them with Tally from um, video switcher systems. We can also send routing information to video routers mm. and so on. But most importantly, 
as an answer to your question, you can add other brands of cameras as well to, the, to your controller here. And we will have the same kind of integration. We will know the parameters just as well as we do on the Canon cameras. So you can basically have two Canon cameras or, or 10 Canon cameras and you can add in a legacy PTC camera that you, that you don't want to throw out but uh, still uh, want to use and, uh, and so on. Uh, that's all possible using um, uh, the, the controllers here. So uh, yes, you can do that. And um, I am almost getting ready over here. Uh, just give me a moment to, uh, to check. Yeah, Jorgen is asking or um, commenting that uh, I've had a very hard time finding my cameras in the software. When I use the hardware, it works without problems. Um, also for that uh, question or that comment, I'm happy to share my contacts with you, Jorgen, and we can, um, we can discuss in... Um, uh, yeah, afterwards we can call each other. Uh, I think it's easier because that could be <laughs> difficult to reply to that question right now. Now, uh, the anonymous attendee who's asking if I can tell you about how the network configurations uh, works uh, to get it up and running. Yeah, um, in principle, we have uh, two softwares. We have a camera search tool uh, and we have a remote camera control software. So what you do initially is to have an isolated um, network environment um, computer, PC then, uh, a switch and a camera. And you can control the, uh, con connect the controller to the switch as well. Then you um, uh, run the, the camera search tool and you will you should find a list of cameras connected to the same switch to the same network and then you click each camera each IP address on the camera and you set the IP address either DHCP or manually and you give the camera a username and a password you set the basic settings for if it's ceiling mounted you flip the image stuff like that when that is done you will end up in a web browser interface that is the IP address of the camera and then you can use the the remote camera control software to control up to yeah, 100 cameras uh, with nine cameras uh, as preview. That was very basic, but again, uh, please send me your details and um, we, we can discuss this uh, afterwards also. No, perfect. Uh, I just want to recognize that we are now uh, one hour into the webinar and it means that we um, basically want to let you go. But before we do, I just want to round up with showing you this additional controller. It's a new thing we are bringing out for NAB. It's called MKA2 and it belongs in the Mega Panel series as an accessory module to our Mega Panel. But it's also a standalone PTC controller. So what you see here is like the PTC Fly, it has four knobs. It's a standard class controller. It has a Hall Effect joystick, which is pretty premium and then it has color displays with eight buttons so it's really for very simple scenarios where you have maybe just three cameras or if you press um, the I think you can actually press the key here to go to uh, other pages or maybe I'm mistaken but anyway it has um, three I think it will do if we add more than three then we can page to more cameras yeah. but it's really designed for um, non-professional users that needs ease of use and I'll tell you uh, and show you what that means. So if we uh, look at the picture of the CRN500, I don't know if we can get that onto the screen, yes, uh, along with my controller please. So uh, if we can have that arranged, yes, something like that, that's pretty useful. So you can see all of it. Let's just check here. Uh, if I go to um, this, the first preset, this preset is known already. So you, um, let me see. Am I operating the wrong camera? I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I have it, uh, it. It says it's the CIN 500, but it is in fact the 300. So <laughs> thank you very much for the confusion and uh, adapting to it. But I'm recalling preset now by pressing these uh, buttons. But I want to show you something super cool here. If I recall this preset, okay? And then, because this preset was not made on this controller, but if I press and hold it to store it once again, notice what happens. It actually stores a thumbnail of the image that I just captured. And then I recall preset number two, okay? And preset number two is now here. I press and hold to store it and it will grab the thumbnail from the camera. I now recall preset number three to go into the position. This is um, the, the nice car on the table. And finally, the position number four here this one and I press and hold to 
store this preset once again. And you see now we have thumbnails and what will that do? Imagine what that will do to a uh, amateur user, a, a volunteer in a, comp a company, in a, in a, in a church, in, in a theater. Someone who just needs to look at the control and say, yeah, that is the preset I want to go to. Yes, that is the preset I want to go to and so on. So that's what you get on the MKA2. And I think that says something about why Skahoe would put out different form factors and models yeah. and also the type of innovation that we are trying to bring to this market that you can do that. Of course, you can page, so you can have multiple pages of these presets. It looks like you can have up to 20 presets. And once again, I want to highlight that actually this feature is linked to the fact that the Canon cameras give us access to the stream of images from the, the, the camera, which is how we can grab those images and integrate in our controllers. Yes, so that's, that's how I wanted to release you guys. But as we mentioned, we have more questions and we just want to keep going. But otherwise, thanks so much for attending and thanks to Scandinavian Photo to uh, also host this webinar. We are very thankful for having had this opportunity. Yep. So, um, but let's just continue with the, the questions then. Oh yeah, uh, Marcus, uh, is it possible to store PTZ only in a preset, no color or shading data? Well, uh, I think we just talked about that. that uh, I'm not sure if it's possible to sort of unclick what you would not like to, to store. Why in English? Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's because me and Kasper, <laughs> it's my we, fault. we didn't I'm understand sorry. each other that well when it came to Danish and Swedish. <laughs> um, so yeah. I, I was afraid about being embarrassed at the show. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> and they, we, we thought it would be super inclusive, but maybe you feel differently about it. In that case, we are really sorry about it, but um, that's how we decided to go this morning. Yeah. Okay, so how, how do one manually fix white balance, focus and so on? The auto is not always that good, I think. Um, Klaus, uh, I think Klaus asked that question. Well, you can set both cameras or, or all of the cameras to, uh, to manual white balance, for example, and then you can choose from the presets or Kelvin. Uh, or also set A, set B as, as normal. It's true. I, for instance, here on the MKA2, which, uh, and that would be the same on the, the PDC Fly and the PDC Pro, there's a white balance mode you can set up here. Oh, it's actually locked right now. And the same uh, thing. So goes it's, for it's probably because well. we are in full auto mode. So if we go to the home screen, we can go to manual mode. And then I would guess that in uh, this case, in the white balance menu, we can now change it to manual. And I think it has some presets too. Mm. You have a white balance A, you have white balance B. You can execute it over here if you want. You have daylight mode, you have tungsten mode, you have uh, Kelvin, where you can set the Kelvin degrees here on this knob. So I know I haven't shown you a lot of adjustments on the controllers today. I've just browsed through the menus. But what you see here is pretty typical what we do we would um, let the white balance mode drive what this button does and then in if we just stay here in manual mode you can see that we have red gain and we have blue gain available over here so we can really adjust it exactly as we want so that would be one answer i could offer on how skyway controllers allows you to customize the white balance yeah. and, and, and very typical and i think also <laughs> an important note on that is that if the camera is set to full auto then you cannot change anything so you need to have it either in, in P, which would be program mm -hmm. mode on the, um, on the CRM 300, and then you can adjust any setting. Yes. Uh, and the same thing goes for the CRM 500. If it's in full auto, uh, nothing will be able to yeah. be adjusted. And that's what you see on Skahoi controllers. Typically, if it is in full auto, uh, as I think the, the shooting, yeah, the yeah, shooting the, mode, the here, other then options would be all button. those parameters that has a little forbidden icon in the lower right corner is, is basically telling you that you can't adjust this particular aspect of the camera unless you unlock it. Mm. Uh, Tarja, he just wants to let us know that the image quality in the 500 camera is the best. I have used the camera several times last week. Love them. Fantastic. Uh, thank you for that, Tarja. Crazy fast. Great to have a live demo. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there are a lot of people saying thank you so much. They need to leave now. Yes. And um, Marius was the last one now saying thank you very much for a fun and informative webinar. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we like to, to have that as the ending note of this webinar, but, but it was fun. It was, yeah, and we never met before. So that <laughs> we was did not, no. And uh, I learned something about camera. your cameras here. And, uh, and I, I learned guess a lot you, about the controllers. You, the other way, so that was useful in so many ways. 
thank you once again for participating in this webinar and uh, yeah, hanging out with us for another 11, 12 minutes here after one o'clock. Hope to see you at some trade show someday and we would love to give you live demos if that happens. We will at least be at the Pro AV West. Yes. In May. I, I think, think so too. I'm not sure yeah. I'll be there personally, but Skahoy representatives Skahoy will be are going to be. Yes. Yeah. And I'm we pretty will, sure. We will have uh, your controllers in our booth as well. All right. So come there and uh, see us and uh, see it for yourself.